16. Perseverance. The canons of Dort give us a very full treatment of this doctrine, and its place in the writings of the Reformation is a central one. As against the insecurity of the late medieval believer and the insecurity of Arminianism, the Reformation taught the security of the believer because his salvation depends not on his work, but on God's unchangeable work in and through Jesus Christ. This doctrine is popularly summarised in the phrase, once saved, always saved. The doctrine of perseverance is very closely connected with the doctrine of the Church. To deny this doctrine of perseverance is to affirm a very emphatic doctrine of a powerful Church. The means of grace and the authority and centrality of the clergy and or elders become strongly stressed. The less secure man is with respect to his salvation, the more he must rely on a strong church, whose means of grace provide him with the supply lines of the means of grace. Although the major Reformation churches, that is, Lutheran and Reformed, should be today the main advocates of this doctrine, their adherence, where it exists, is purely formal. The authority of the Church in Calvinistic circles has been greatly overstressed, so that Milton's comment is all too true. New Presbyter is but old priest writ large. Adherence in such circles to the doctrine of perseverance is more or less formal. Adherence to the authority of the Church is passionate and vehement. No return to a biblical limitation on the power of the Church is possible without a revival of the meaning of this doctrine of perseverance. But this is not all. Insecurity in faith calls for and precipitates a hunger for security which the state then provides socially. This means statist security, cradle to grave regulations and protection, social security, socialism psychiatry and more. Salvation and security therein is the actual goal of most politics, psychiatry and psychology today. The Westminster Standards emphasise this doctrine in the larger Catechism, 79-81 to and Chapter 17, of the perseverance of the saints in the Confession of Faith. Paul speaks often of it, as in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. The summary phrase, once saved, always saved, is both an accurate summary of this doctrine and also a mistake in its emphasis. It is true in that it calls attention firmly and clearly to the fact that we have an eternal security in Jesus Christ. It does justice to the sovereign nature of God's grace. It makes clear that all who are truly in Christ are saved, and no man can pluck them out of Christ's hand. John chapter 10, verses 28 and 29. It tells us that we have a security in our salvation, and can cease from troubling ourselves on that matter, and proceed to godly reconstruction. It is at this point that the phrase falls short. Once saved, always saved. Places the emphasis on our condition, and accurately so, but it fails to call attention to our calling. We are not saved merely to be rescued, but we are saved to serve the Lord, to exercise dominion in His name over every area of life and thought, over all the world. Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 to 28, and to seek first his kingdom and righteousness. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. It is the fallen man who, in terms of the tempter's program, every man as his own God, Genesis chapter 3 verse 5, places the primary emphasis upon man. The redeemed must place priority on God's word and calling. Therefore, This doctrine can be better summarised thus. Once called, always called. 
The purpose of our salvation is the restoration of fallen man into God's calling to be his vicegerent and to subdue the earth and himself to the Lord. Covenant man thus has an inescapable calling. Our salvation is a restoration to that calling and our security therein, our perseverance therein. Isaiah has much to report about our security and our calling as witness these declarations of the Lord. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, where they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2 No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17 Again, Paul tells us, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labour is not in vain in the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Paul here apparently echoes Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11, wherein God declares, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. The Lord God, being omnipotent and infallible, His purpose never fails, and His word always prospers. When God saves a man, He places man within His kingdom and its purpose so that man's labour is never in vain. Man remains frail, fallible and erring, but God makes all things work together for good for and through those who are called according to his purpose and in terms of his purpose and glory. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 Our security is in God's omnipotence and grace. If we deny the doctrine of perseverance, we make salvation dependent on man's will rather than the grace of God, as Burkhoff noted. Then, too, not only salvation, but perseverance and security are dependent upon man and man's will. Those who hold to such an insecurity usually take one of two courses open to them. First, they can rely more and more heavily on the means of grace, the church, and the church becomes the means of assurance, and grace becomes channeled more and more exclusively through the church. Instead of the clear word of God, the words of men who constitute themselves into the voice of Christ's church become their reliance and security. Second, they can seek security in experience. Arminianism is heavily experience-oriented, It is a common fact that many people go from revival meeting to revival meeting, retreat after retreat, seeking more stimulation and experience. Their security rests on continual excitation and a renewed, quote, glorious experience, end quote, so that their concern remains this, the assurance of salvation. The very assurance they deny from God, they seek from experience. The man who knows that he has an eternal security in Jesus Christ is released from that futile quest for security in himself or from an institution. He is released into godly action, Christian reconstruction. Instead of a lifelong quest for security and assurance, he is released into action for dominion in the name of Jesus Christ. He has been called into an eternal calling and he is called into power and dominion in and under Christ the King. He may suffer in that calling, be slaughtered like sheep, as Paul states it, but, as Paul goes on to say, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, 
nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans chapter 8, verses 37 to 39.